Hello everyone, welcome to this research methods tutorial about correlations. I'm sure you know all this by now, so if you do want to go over it again, then just pause the video here and have a read through. So let's talk about correlations. They're used to measure the relationship between two covariables. So we're looking at two things that might vary or change together. Remember, correlations do not have independent and dependent variables because we're not deliberately manipulating one thing and measuring another thing. It's just two measurements that may or may not change with each other. So we could have a positive correlation where one variable increases and the other variable also increases. So as one gets higher, the other gets higher as well. So a positive correlation looks like this or a negative correlation. So as one variable increases, the other variable decreases or gets lower. There can also be no correlation at all. You also need to know about what's called a correlation coefficient. And this is the result of a statistical test which will tell you the strength of a relationship between two variables. So whether there's a very strong relationship or a very weak relationship, or no relationship at all. So the coefficients are on a scale. So the scale goes from minus one through to zero and through to plus one. If the correlation coefficient is zero or close to zero, it means that there's either no correlation or a very, very weak correlation, a very weak relationship between those. The closer to one, on either end, the stronger the relationship and the minus or the plus sign tells us if that's a negative relationship or a positive relationship. So for example, minus eight is a very strong negative correlation. Minus three is a weak negative correlation because it's closer to zero, which means there's zero correlation. You won't have to calculate it in the exam, but you may be given a correlation coefficient and asked what it means, or asked to sketch it on a graph. So let's look at some of these strengths and weaknesses of using correlation studies. Correlations are good because the correlation coefficient gives us some information about the extent of a relationship. So it can say exactly how weak or how strong a relationship is, and that's quite useful information to know. They're also very good to use if it would be unethical or impractical to actually manipulate variables in an experiment. For example, if we wanted to see how well people concentrate depending on how much sleep they've had, it would be a little bit unethical to keep people awake all night or to let them only have one hour sleep or two hours sleep a night. But we could just measure how much sleep they'd had and find a way of testing their concentration and correlate those two variables. One of the biggest weaknesses of correlation is that we cannot infer cause and effect. We can't say that one variable is causing the change in another variable because there might be unknown variables that link the two or there might just not be a causal relationship. For example, we could look at this positive correlation between the reported number of shark attacks in a week and the number of ice cream sales in a week, for example. Um, it would be silly to say that shark attacks cause people to buy more ice creams or buying ice creams causes more shark attacks. That would be silly. The variable that might link those is the sun. If it's a sunny day, people might go swimming more, so there's more opportunities for shark attacks and they're also more likely to buy ice creams. So we can't say that there's a cause and effect relationship between the two variables. Think about something like height and shoe size. Shoe size doesn't cause a change in height. So let's have a look at some scatter graphs which show correlations. Notice that on my graph, I have a title, relationship between hours spent studying per week and test performance really really important even if you're asked just to sketch a graph that you include a title it's also important that you label your axes so here we've got the number of hours spent studying per week and the marks on a test out of 12 
otherwise it's just meaningless data. Each of these data points represents two pieces of information from each participant. So this participant studied for five hours and scored two out of 12 on the test. This is an example of a strong positive correlation because we can see the longer somebody studies for, the higher their mark on the test. This is an example of a negative correlation. Again, it has a title and I've labelled the axes. So here we've got the number of hours spent watching TV per week, note 12, and marks on a test. So we can see the more hours of TV somebody watches in a week, the lower their test score, presumably because they're watching TV and not studying. And here we have an example of no correlation whatsoever. There's no relationship between these two things. So obviously the size of your TV will have no impact on the marks that you get out of the test. There's no relationship here at all. And that's all, folks. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.